We are in the famous, famously haunted Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. That's right. July 1st, 1863, 150,000 men from two armies would converge on this town. We are going to be experiencing the closest thing to a full solar eclipse. And who knows what that could stir up, what that could charge up. Welcome to the Haunted Orphanage, or as the Travel Channel calls it, one of the most terrifying places in America. Soldier. We were told that she buried Robert in the backyard, is that true? Yes. Whoa. Whoa. Something just moved upstairs. Children. Ooh. Rosa J. Carmichael to punish them and torture them. Ooh. I thought I just heard a man's voice say Rosa. Dave, we're in one of the most haunted cities in the United States of America. We are? We are. We are in the famous, famously haunted Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. That's right. Where between July 1st and July 3rd, 1863, Confederate and Union troops clashed on this land surrounding and inside this city during the American Civil War. Now this was one of the most devastating battles in the entire war. And during those three days, they accumulated 50,000 casualties. In this small town. Yeah, that's a small city's population. Yes, in three days, just gone. It was pandemonium. The aftermath of this battle left the city of Gettysburg reeling. And the paranormal activity and spirits that are said to be left behind here are absolutely mind-blowing. I mean, so many reports of strange and unusual occurrences, paranormal activity, and we've been invited out here to investigate by ghostly images of Gettysburg. Yes. To investigate two locations between two nights. And we'll get to that here in just a little bit, but first we're on our way out into the middle of the battlefield to one of the most famous spots where the clash took place. That's right. Devil's Den, because today, here in about an hour, we are going to be experiencing the closest thing to a full solar eclipse. And who knows what that could stir up, what that could charge up. True. This is an interesting experiment for our investigation tonight, and also for what could happen in the moment during the solar eclipse. So let's head out to Devil's Den to watch this eclipse and to see if there's any strange and unusual activity while we're on the battlefield this afternoon. This is gonna be interesting and exciting. How often do you get to try something like this, so? I know, it's crazy. Let's head out there, let's do it. It's crazy to think, I mean, just driving through this area it's also beautiful and scenic right now, but to go back in time nearly 160 years and to see what this would have looked like, the devastation, just the horror that took place here in Gettysburg, is just mind-blowing. I mean, it's not something that I think we could even wrap our brains around. No, not at all. And it wasn't just the soldiers who were affected by this, it was the town folk. It was the people that lived here who were devastated by this battle. And that includes one of the locations that we are gonna be investigating while we're here, and that is the Jenny Wade House. Yes. The most famous report of a civilian losing their lives during the Civil War, and it happened smack dab in the middle of the fighting, in the middle of the skirmish, and they say that it is one of the most haunted small houses, not just in, in Gettysburg, not just in America, but the world. Yeah. And then for the other location, the location we're going to be at tonight, not only did it see the devastation of the battle, being that it was used as a field hospital, but it saw the devastation that the battle and the American Civil War caused when it was converted into an orphanage for children who lost everything to the fighting. 
and then were forced to endure a cruel woman who oversaw the orphanage, who tortured them and locked them in the basement and did horrible and cruel things to them that left a stain on that building that's still felt to this day. Yeah, unbelievable things. So this Gettysburg, Pennsylvania experiment that we will be conducting over the next two days, not only including the reports and claims of paranormal activity, but also the effect of a major solar and lunar event, what that could have, what type of effect that could have on the paranormal activity that we're going to experience here in Gettysburg. I'm excited to see what happens. All right, Ryan, here we are on top of Devil's Den. Yes, we are standing here in one of the most, I guess, violent places of the fighting that happened during the Battle of Gettysburg, the important moment when the Confederate Army pushed the Unions back to Little Round Top where they made a incredible stand, but it's also the best place with no tree cover. <laughs> yes. And the clouds are moving away. And we actually have a camera set up right here to try and capture the eclipse. And I will show you guys that if I can see here. Yep, we have a makeshift ND filter taped onto the camera. And that is going to hopefully allow us to get a good shot of the moon passing in front of the sun. Uh, we wouldn't be able to capture the image just using the camera's lens alone because it is far too bright to see that moon passing in front of it. So there's a lot that hopefully we'll capture as far as the eclipse goes right here on this camera. Yeah, I think we're in the perfect setup here. Um, we're just a little bit away from this actually happening, and I'm excited to see what happens here in just a few minutes. Me too. Actually, if I, if I look at this shot right here, I can see the bottom right-hand corner of the sun is starting to be blocked. So you can see the very bottom corner looks like it's starting to move in front of it. And so it's actually started, it's begun. What happens here? at Devil's Den during an eclipse. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. We're going to find out. Now, we're not going to be doing any in in investigating, so to no. speak, because the National Park Service doesn't allow paranormal investigation on the battlefield, on the actual park. So we are just going to be recording on video and audio. We're going to have an audio recorder going. And if we happen to capture something when this is going on, you know, we just happen to capture something. Yeah, I think there is a good chance that we might get something happen if, if, if we play our cards right and everything lines up just as it needs to. We might get something cool. I think so. So let's grab uh, the audio recorders here. And there's quite a crowd out here. Um, we got quite a good number of people. I'm not going to really show you any close-ups of anybody because <laughs> I don't want anyone in the video that doesn't want to be in the video. But we got a pretty good crowd out here. And so... Everyone's out here for an eclipse party in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. That's right. And hopefully this will charge stuff up for our investigation tonight at the Gettysburg Orphanage. Yes. But let's uh, see if we can capture this eclipse in all of its glory. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, Ryan, it is happening. It's happening. We have about 20% mm, about coverage right now on our camera right here, which I'm gonna have to move because it's starting to, the sun of course is moving through the sky. It's starting to get close to the edge of frame. Yes. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna call this our eclipse glasses cam. <laughs> yeah. So go ahead and throw that down in the comments. Tell us how much you love the eclipse glasses cam. So for those of you that didn't get a chance to see the eclipse, have never seen an eclipse, didn't have the glasses to look at the eclipse, we're trying to capture it in the way that you would see it with your eyes while looking through the eclipse goggles. Yeah, it looks exactly the same as the cheap little glasses that we have, so. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this get a little bit more coverage here. And once we have that little bit more coverage going, then we're gonna maybe roll an EVP session. Yeah, we might try it. We're getting quite the crowd here. Uh, everybody's here for us. Um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, everybody's here for the, the eclipse that is trying to happen, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So we're gonna try and do what we can 
but we didn't anticipate a crowd out here, so no. we're not going to be doing any sort of investigating. We're just going to roll on an audio recorder and see if it captures anything. Yeah, we'll check back in here in a few minutes. That's right. It's gotten much darker out here, that is for sure, but that is also because there is some cloud cover that's moved in front of the sun and the moon. So we have a lot of, hopefully, hopefully we have some quick winds come through here and blow these, this cloud cover off so that we can get a good view of the, of the maximum eclipse that we're gonna have here. It's not gonna be total. We would have to be in Ohio, certain parts of Ohio to see a total eclipse, but yeah. we're gonna get about 80 to 90% here in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, sitting here on Devil's Den. It's getting pretty close right now. It is. Once we get to the point of the closest point to the maximum, we're going to go ahead and try and roll on an audio recorder and see what happens. It's kind of quieted down out here. It has. Hopefully everybody will get real quiet. These clouds will blow through and it'll be perfect. I hope so. This is getting pretty cool. It is. Even if we don't capture anything paranormal, what a cool experience to be here. And how cool do I look in these glasses? Like, oh. I mean, you are an absolute stud in Icon. those glasses. Yeah, look at that. That's right. That's right. Have you ever seen in your life anything more iconic? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh. All right, so it is official. The lighting is changing. It is becoming rather spooky out here. The devil's den. It is very spooky. All the light has changed to like this weird yellowish color, making everything quite whimsical and dreamlike. Yes. And as you can see from the eclipse cam, we are at about, at this point, we're at about 80 something percent, I would say, coverage. Yeah. Unfortunately, we've had to get crowded right to here because there's a bunch of people around now, but. Yeah, everyone had the same idea we did. They thought, which we should have known. We should have known that if we wanted a quiet spot, Devil's Den probably wasn't <laughs> the best because here on the Gettysburg battlefield, if you want to see something cool with the sky, Devil's Den is where you come. But mm -hmm. because of that, we got a bunch of people around us, so. But that's okay. We want everyone to enjoy it with us. We do. Rolling Eclipse EVP. We're gonna let this sit right here. And uh, we're gonna know that there's probably a good amount of contamination going on right now, but. Yes. It's so weird looking out here. I mean, just looking up at the clouds. Like I said, it's almost like there's like a, it's like if, if the golden hour was happening at two, at 3 p.m. It's as if there's like an eclipse happening. <laughs> it's very weird. <laughs> starting you're starting to be able to see the haze in the atmosphere now uh, with the weird sunlight all right I do want to I do want to say if there just happens to be any soldiers out here watching this eclipse. Do you know an eclipse is happening? Can you see the eclipse? If there's anyone here that's listening to us, we're going to be over at the Gettysburg Orphanage tonight. I don't know if you would know what building that is, but it's over by Cemetery Hill. We'd love to speak to you. We'd also like to uh, let any of the soldiers out here know that if you want to talk to us, just talk right there. We can hear you. Thank you for fighting out here and changing the country, the whole outlook of the world. It's crazy.
What was that? Did you whistle? No, I didn't whistle. Okay, that is really strange. Do you hear it? No, I don't play it. Oh yeah, it's like, huh. There's a strange whistle on here and I don't remember hearing anyone whistle. This whistle was the only part of the audio that we felt, in the moment, could have been unexplained. But as you heard, it ended up being a man whistling at someone he knew. This is why we always check the camera audio if we believe we've captured something unexplained. If it's able to be debunked, the explanation will be found there. This is exactly what happened when we returned to our accommodation and listened back to the camera audio. Okay, I do hear something on here. It's not as prevalent as it is on here, but I do hear some sort of whistling or chirping. I don't know whether it's someone that was nearby. I don't know whether it was a bird. Take a listen, Dave, and see if you can... Hmm. There is something on here, so this may not be paranormal. But even though we didn't capture any paranormal evidence during the eclipse, coming up tonight, we still have eight hours inside one of the most terrifying places in America. Ooh. The haunted Gettysburg Orphanage. Hey everybody, my name is Tom. I'm a tour guide with Ghostly Images of Gettysburg and welcome to the Haunted Orphanage, or as the Travel Channel calls it, one of the most terrifying places in America. And to understand why this building has this dark history, why there seems to be a dark cloud hovering over this building to this day, we need to step back in time to the years 1863 to 1877. Everyone knows about the big battle that took place here July 1st, 1863. 150,000 men from two armies would converge on this town, population 2,400. This is Cemetery Hill where the orphanage is located. This was a Union position and this building was the actual headquarters of Union General O.O. O. Howard. This was also used as a field hospital, which meant amputations in this very room and in the cellar below. Arms and legs were stacked window high. It was a horrible, hideous scene. Around the building was also a temporary burial ground of Union soldiers. The graves were very shallow, it was ten, a, a foot deep, and heavy rains would hit Gettysburg on the evening of July 3rd into July 4th and the soil would be washing off these bodies and arms and legs and faces would protrude through the soil. The smell of death permeated throughout the town here. Local citizens would wear handkerchiefs dipped in lavender oil or peppermint oil, anything to kill the smell. The connection to the orphanage and the Battle of Gettysburg actually begins on July 1st, 1863 when a Union sergeant named Amos Humiston is mortally wounded on the north end of town. And as he lay dying, he held a photograph of his three children, Frank, Frederick, and Alice. It would be the last image he sees before he passes away. Three days later, a local woman would come across his body and she would take the photograph. She gives it to her father, last name is Shriver. He owned a saloon on the outskirts of town. He would have a chance encounter with a doctor from Philadelphia named Dr. John Francis Bournes. He was a surgeon. He was in Gettysburg volunteering for the Union Army. He was intrigued by this photograph and asked if he could have it. And he made it his mission to find the family of this fallen soldier because Amos Humiston didn't have any identification on him. Nobody knew who he was. So Dr. Bournes would run a detailed description of this photograph in all the Northeast newspapers. It became national news. Children of the battlefield, whose father was he? And it took about three months before a woman who lived in a small town in New York State called Portville, that would be Felinda Humiston, Amos's wife. She would realize that was the photograph she sent her husband, realizes he died at the Battle of Gettysburg, 
Falunda would be in touch with Dr. Borns, who would take a train to Portville. He's initially welcomed as a hero, a good Samaritan. He was also selling copies of that photograph for 25 cents a piece for what he said would be for the future education of the three children. Sounds like this Dr. Borns was a really good man, but we're gonna find out soon enough. He wasn't such a good person after all. But he had a vision, the need for orphan homes, and that would wait till 1865 when the Civil War ends. Over 600,000 men are killed during the course of the Civil War, 2% of the U.S. population. Dr. Borns would be part of a larger group of men based out of Philadelphia. They would form a corporation. One of the men heavily involved was General George Meade, the commanding general here at Gettysburg. He actually raised a lot of money to purchase this building. In 1866, they are ready to have a grand opening. He also reaches out to Felinda Humiston, ask her, would you be willing to move to Gettysburg? You can bring your three children. You could live in the building. Her late husband is buried in the National Cemetery next door, and she comes. And when the orphanage opens, it's a grand celebration. The children are really happy. They're well-fed, they're well-clothed, they're getting a good education. They'd be seen out in the backyard playing, and they would volunteer in the community. Over the first three years, things continue to go well. But in 1869, Miss Felinda would meet a man, a veteran of the Civil War named Asa Barnes. Asa Barnes sends her a letter proposing they get married, and she accepts. They get married in this very room, attended by the children and local citizens, and it's a festive occasion, but the children are also very sad because their beloved Miss Felinda is leaving Gettysburg and moving to Massachusetts with her new husband. So in 1870, Dr. Borns is responsible for bringing in the next matron, and he knows a woman that he said had exceptional credentials, a strong disciplinarian. He thought she'd be perfect for the job, and her name is Rosa J. Carmichael. Rosa J. Carmichael is the complete opposite of Miss Felinda. She hates children, never been married, and about as cruel a woman as you'd ever want to be involved with children. And that's when the dark history begins, the dark cloud that seems to hover over this building to this very day, why there's paranormal activity both inside the building and on the grounds. The children who had been happy are now miserable. They're petrified of Rosa Carmichael because she would punish them and torture them for any slight infraction that they might commit. The children who had been well-fed are now underfed. They're malnourished. Their clothes are worn and tattered. It's just a terrible place for children. And her punishments and torture would happen outside the building, in this very room, and her cruelest punishment would take place in the cellar below. In the backyard, there was a split rail fence surrounding the property. She would often tie children to the split rail fence. Hot summer days, the children would bake in the sun. Back then, wild dogs used to run loose in Gettysburg, gnawing at the children's ankles, growling at them. They had to be scared to death. We know of at least one child that died while Rosa was here. His name was Robert Turner. We believe several other children may have died or gone missing. And one day a local child comes to the orphanage, knocks on the door, asks, is Robert home? Can he come out and play? And Miss Rosa basically says, Robert's not here. He's dead and slams the door in the child's face. She claimed the boy died of irritable bowel syndrome, issues in his stomach. She never called the doctor, never notified authorities. She actually buried Robert Turner in the backyard. The authorities would come out. They exhume the body. They perform an autopsy. They said this boy didn't die of irritable bowel syndrome. This boy died of starvation. There was an incident on Christmas Eve in 1876. The caretakers of the local cemetery were walking home from the town square where they just attended church services. And as they're passing the orphanage, they could hear the cries of a child from the back of the building saying, help me, help me, please help me. They couldn't ignore these cries. They would go to the back and they would find a young boy named Georgie London locked in one of the outhouses. Rosa placed the boy in the outhouse on Christmas Eve. It was a freezing cold night. The boy pleaded with the couple, please don't bring me back into that building. And at least for a couple days, Georgie London was in the comfort of the uh, residents at the gatehouse. Otherwise the boy would have froze to death. 
One boy that was here, who's often referred to as one of Miss Rose's thugs, was Richard Hutchinson. He was 19 years old. He had a handicap. He only had one arm. And his younger sister, Lizzie, came here. And the children called him Stick Boy because he would carry a stick and beat the children under Rose's watchful eye. So now back to Dr. Borns, who we thought was this good Samaritan. He's considered the founder. He's the secretary and treasurer of the board. But word is getting out that he was embezzling funds from the orphanage. Uh, when he went to Portville, New York to see Felinda, he was supposed to return the original photograph that Amos died in, had in his hands. Well, he gave the family a copy and the family wanted the original and he said, you'll get it upon my death. And many years later, when he finally passes away, the family never actually got that picture. He was selling the photographs for a quarter a piece for the future education. But years later, as the children get older, they claim they got very, very little of that money. So he was pocketing churches or Sabbath schools he used to sponsor children here, donate at least $25 or more a year. And he was skimming money off those donations, putting in his pocket, cutting back on the quality of the food. So Dr. Bournes wasn't so good. This was also his summer residence. It was his vacation getaway. When he was staying here, the children had to tend to anything he wanted. He'd snap his fingers. He had to see what was going on here. And he either endorsed Rose's cruel methods or simply turned a blind eye. In this very room, another punishment, Rosa would force children to stand on tables and chairs, and they would have to stand still as long as they could until their legs would grow weary, they'd literally fall and collapse to the floor. She would belittle the young girls who came here, often uh, forcing them to wear boys' clothing, sometimes for as long as two months. And her cruelest punishments did take place in the cellar below. Well... <clears throat> Welcome to the cellar of the orphanage and around us, these are the original stone walls. These are the original wood beams. And one of her punishments, especially for the older children, she would actually shackle children to the wall of the cellar here. And the last remaining evidence is this portion. The top part is an original part of the shackle. The bottom part is not. Up until about 10 years ago, there were shackles all along the wall here. They're no longer here today. Now, she couldn't shackle some of the younger children because their wrists were too tiny, but she had other means to punish them. In that barrel, while not original, she would place children as young as four or five years old inside of a barrel like that. She would fill the barrel with cold water. She would tie their wrists to the side of the barrel, and the poor kids would be standing in there. Their legs would grow weary. They'd be standing in their own bodily fluids, children that age weren't much taller than the barrel. They would nearly drown in there. And her cruelest punishment of all is what she called solitary confinement. And that would be what we refer to as the pit. Some people call it a dungeon. And it's located down this passageway here. Do they know why she was such a cruel person? Like, oh, don't really know. No? And she was just a mean-spirited person, that's for sure. And yeah. what she did to these kids is unbelievable. And I'm gonna put the light on, so see, down this passageway. This is creepy down here. No. Oh, yeah. It's dark. People on our tours sometimes turn back, get overcome with emotion. People come out crying. One person on a tour not long ago just walked down. He said, I won't go in because my wife was here about a month ago and she believes something followed her home from oh, wow. this location. So this is a confined space about four feet by eight feet. Uh, she would shackle children inside of the pit here, sometimes for hours, sometimes for days, sometimes for as long as a week. Children would get minimal food and there were no windows or natural light down here. So the children would have been in total darkness. So I just can't imagine what those children went through down here. They're all friends, classmates, probably be crying and screaming and they would hear Rose's heavy footsteps on the wood floor above. And whenever she would open that creaky cellar door, they'd be petrified as to what might happen next.
uh, local citizens were concerned about what was going on here, but they had no authority. This was a private organization, but word was getting around. They heard about Robert Turner, the boy that died, Georgie London locked in the outhouse. One night, actually, stick boy Richard Hutchinson actually sneaks out of here. He walks 20 miles in his bare feet to Waynesboro, Pennsylvania, which is where Dr. Borns was actually born. And he goes to authorities and said, you have to do something. This woman is crazy. She's torturing the children. They're not getting any food. And finally, things close in on Rosa Carmichael. She is actually charged with three counts of cruelty and abuse of children. She's taken to court. She's found guilty on one of the charges, the incident involving Georgie London in the outhouse. And her punishment, which was the harshest that can be imposed on a woman during that time period, she was fined a total of $20 and she was ordered to leave town. And amazingly, she doesn't leave town. She comes right back here, says everything's a lie. They're slandering my good name. She would stay here for at least a couple months and God only knows what those poor kids went through in those final two months. But one night, Rosa Carmichael just disappears. And the mystery of Rosa Carmichael is that we don't know where she went after she leaves the orphanage. Back then, there were no birth certificates, so it's very possible she changed her name, moved on, hid her past. Some people believe she never left Gettysburg, that local citizens were so furious at what she did to these poor children that they may have murdered her and buried her in a field. Some believe she went and reconnected with Dr. Borns and maybe worked for him, but we can't verify any of these stories. We don't even have a photograph of Rosa Carmichael that we can verify is her. But no charges are ever pressed against Dr. Borns. He would leave and go back to Philadelphia and continue his medical practice. So in 1877, the reputation here is really bad. Local folks are tired of the negative news and the stories coming out of this place. The orphanage does close. Rolling on that. Got any EMS slides? Or what was there for us? Rolling first session, first floor orphanage. And already Dave's getting the music box going off. That's right. Just doing what I do best. And no matter where it's set up, you always find it. <laughs> I do. Oh, man. So we're here in the first floor of the orphanage here in Gettysburg. This is a building with a horrifically tragic history. What was supposed to be something good turned into a nightmare for many of the children that were kept here. And we're going to try and see if we can communicate with maybe any of the children who might be here, but also Rosa Carmichael to see if she's still here. We're starting out here on the first level and then we're gonna be going down into the basement here in just a little bit, because that's where it's gonna get really creepy. Mm -hmm. We could also maybe make communication with Dr. Bourne. Yeah, you never know, he might still be here. He might. So, especially because there's so much mystery surrounding what happened to Rosa Carmichael and Dr. Bourne. Nobody knows what happened to Rosa. Oop. So, there's the, all those rumors that she never left Gettysburg. Maybe that's why people believe they have experiences with her spirit here. Could be. We also have set up over here on the table, we have the Electro Ushi Stereophonic Electromagnetic Microphones set up on the table over here. Now those can hear in frequencies well over 90 kilohertz. It's interesting because those are well beyond frequencies that humans can hear at, meaning it can hear energy. It can hear the electricity. Yes. Hello? If there's anyone here with us, my name is Ryan, and this is Dave right here. We've come a long way to speak to you. We're visitors here, and we want to talk to anyone who wants to tell their story.
It sounded like shuffling or something. Literally moments before we hear this shuffling noise near the cellar door, the Electro Ushi stereophonic EMF microphones captured the sound of an energy spike. Could this strange spike in energy be related to that shuffling sound that we heard? Tell us what you think in the comments below. Anyone who wants to tell their story. there's anybody here with us, we would love for you to come out and chat with us. We just came here to try and talk to you and maybe let you have a chance to speak as well. Maybe if you have a message to give or something to say, or if you're worried about something, come through and talk to us. If there's any children in here, you don't have to stand on the tables anymore. That awful Rosa is not able to hurt you anymore. That sounds like it's down here. able to hurt you anymore. That sounds like it's down here. Did Rosa do bad things to you? If you'd like to try and talk to us, you can respond by touching one of these toys we have set up for you. They have red or green lights on them. Could you try touching one of those for us so we know you're here? I got a strange chill right now. Really? Yes. Like, it's fairly warm in here, and I got, like, this really cold energy that came around me. Rolling EVP session, Orphanage. Ryan, Dave, first level, placing recorder on the table. Is there someone around me right now? It just got very, very cold here. And if you can hear me... I just put a box down on this table, right by Dave. And if you'd like to speak to us and leave us a message, you can talk to that and we'll hear your voice. Is this your home? Are you happy here? Is it true that she would lock that she would tie you to the fence outside? Is Robert here? What's the name of the guy with one arm? What do you call him? Are you happy here? Do you like this place or do you wish you could leave? And then I have an idea because one thing that we don't get to utilize very often because of just the environment in a lot of places we investigate is the ovilus. Mm hmm Whoa. Did you hear that? I did. 
And I feel like because these wooden tables are here, the problem with the ovalis that we have is if it's set on something metal, it tends to have mag magnetism. Mm -hmm. And then it just repeatedly spits out words. But because we have these wooden tables, maybe we should pull out the ovalis and see, just as a baseline, how if it starts speaking too much, we can turn it off. Because I know your propensity to hate that <laughs> device. Yes. But I think it'd be interesting to try. Let's do it. I just set up a box right there on the table that we think you can use to speak to us. It'll say words. Are you able to come through and use that and tell us what your name is? You don't have to be afraid of me or Ryan. We're just here to help you out and talk to you. You don't have to be scared. Can you hear me talking to you? How many of you are here? Can you tell us how many children are here with us? Well, Did you hear that? I did. Are you trying to close that door right there? You can push it closed. We won't be upset. Here, I'll even uh, move this bottle out of the way. Oh. Wah, wah, wah. Maybe you could push it open. That was the backyard out there. Should we go in there? Will you follow us out to the back? What? Soldier. Is there a soldier here with us? Are you here? Unclear. Unclear. This was the Union headquarters. And a, and a hospital, right? Push that door open for us, please. Place. What? It said, ah, place. Chess. Computer. Caress. Caress. I do know that the uh, Union soldiers loved to play chess on their computers. <laughs> There is a soldier here with us. We'd love for you to come out and make yourself known and talk to us. We're not here to hurt anybody. In fact, all this stuff that we brought with us is not just for the children, it's for anyone who wants to use it to speak to us. It's a way for us because we can't see you, so it's a way for us to know where you are so we know where to come and talk to you. You can not only touch it and make the lights turn on, but, and it'll play music. Are you upset that we're here? You wanna um, step down into this other room? Yeah. Yeah, I think it'd be a good idea. Maybe maybe whoever's in here will make something happen while we step in the other room. Maybe. All right, children. We're going to leave the dining room here. So while we're gone, we would love for you to come up and try and touch these things. Look. It 
See that? Just like that. I'll even close this for you. It'll be an interesting experiment to see what the ovalis says in there. Mm -hmm. I was not expecting it to say soldier. No. No, that's weird. Said command shot. Did it? Yes. Hold on. No, it said demand shot. It said stop demand shot. Huh. That's weird. That. I heard the shot. I thought it said command, but. freaking out a little bit. Is there anyone down here? If you can hear us, try and touch those red lights, please. Amos Humiston, are you here? Your wife was a kind-hearted woman who helped many children who lost their parents during the, during the fighting. Amos, the last thing that you saw as you were wounded and fatally fading was that photograph of your three children. The same photograph that I can see right back here on the wall. You loved your children very much. I hope that uh, you've reunited with your children, Amos. If you have, and you're back with them, and you can hear me, can you touch one of these red lights that we have set up in here? It's like a, a red candle, kind of looks like fire. I find it weird how the ovalus has stopped talking. Oh, I thought you turned it off. No. Huh. Was there a little boy Buried in this yard back here. Mrs. Humiston. You loved your job here, didn't you? Hmm. Could always walk down here. I got a weird feeling down here. Really? Yeah. Do you remember how I've talked about that before? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How it's like I get like this tingly feeling and sensation in my knees and from the lower part of my legs. And it's just something I've picked up on over the years. And now the ovalus is talking again. I heard below, I heard drag. That was weird. Can you feel the energy of the eclipse that happened earlier? The moon passed in front of the sun.
Is that something that you can use to speak to us? Can you use that energy? Are there children that hide in the dungeon down in the pit to stay away from Rosa Carmichael? Noises in that room. While we're standing completely still in the back room, the camera in the orphanage's dining room captured the distinct sound of footsteps. It's important to note that Tom lives upstairs in the second floor apartment of this building, and someone else lives on the third floor. So I texted him to see if he or his upstairs neighbor were moving around between 11.30 and midnight. This is what he texted back to me. Ryan, I know that I didn't come down the steps and the neighbor upstairs wouldn't have. He goes to bed very early and never leaves his apartment at that hour. I recall being in my living room on the recliner at around 11.30 watching one of your videos. I was really tired and turned it off around midnight and would have walked three to four steps to my sofa. I fell right to sleep and woke up at 5 a.m. My living room is more above the gift shop than the dining room. I actually just recreated those same steps with a digital recorder in the dining room and on playback I didn't capture any footsteps, except when I left the apartment and went down the steps. I can tell you that on multiple occasions during my tours I and tour guests have heard footsteps in the dining room from my apartment when no one was in that apartment. So in my opinion, you very well may have captured something. Even still, we can't 100% rule out some sort of contamination but these footsteps sound far too close to this dining room to completely debunk it. What do you think? Dungeon down in the pit. Stay away from Rosa Carmichael. Stay away from Rosa Carmichael. There's somebody out there in that closet. Stab. Stab. It seems pretty quiet up here, activity-wise. Mm -hmm. I think we should probably go down to the basement, and one of us should climb back there in the pit. Okay. You? Uh, sure. We did it, guys, we did it. Dave's agreeing to go in a basement pit. We did it. <laughs> Y'all better hit that thumbs up button. <laughs> So let's go ahead and move this equipment downstairs and see what happens in the creepiest and scariest part of the Gettysburg Orphanage, the dungeon, the pit. Let's go. Let's go. I'm pretty sure the REM pod just went off right there. Already in the pit. Okay, rolling. Okay. So we are gonna head downstairs now to the basement, to the dungeon where the pit was, where some of the most severe punishment took place from Rosa Carmichael to the poor children that were stuck here with her. While we were setting up the equipment, I was trying to set the camera up to where I could see the REM pod and I finally got a good angle on it. And as I walked away, the REM pod went off. It did not go off at all up here. Mm -mm. So that was a little bit strange. So I have some more equipment that we can set up down here. 
and we're going to go down and see what happens. These stairs are so creepy, mm -hmm. so narrow. It is a literal dungeon. down here all right we made it down here to the dungeon down down to the basement of the orphanage there is a lot of stories of paranormal activity down here the most infamous stories of paranormal activity here at the Gettysburg Orphanage happen here and I think Dave we should split up down here you think I think you should take ghost tube okay and go and sit in the pit and I'll stay out here by where the children were shackled up. And we'll see what happens. You're just kicking me to the curb like that? Oh, for sure. I think it's a good idea. <sighs> if I see one spider. <laughs> we'll anything, switch. It's more than two legs. If you see a spider, we'll switch. You have my word. Okay. Chris said there were none down here. She did. She said there were none down here. So. Chris and Tom both Where? assured you. Give it back. Give what back? Okay. Dave is going down the long hallway to the pit. And if there's anyone in there, you can speak to him. We know there was horrific things done to you inside this orphanage. And we're here to try and allow your story to be told. So that people know the horrific things that happened here and people know who you are. Ow. Careful. Ow. Ow. Sounds like he's having a lot of trouble down there. Okay. All right, I'm in here now. You good in there, Dave? So far. Okay. So we're gonna place the epoch right there. Hog. Run now. Why should I run? Why should I run, huh? Can you tell me? Came down here to have a conversation with you. Damage. Can you tell me the name of the of the lady that put you down here? That mean, mean lady, what's her name? Is there anyone that was chained to the wall over here? Any children who are horrifically punished? We're here to talk to you. Is there anybody in here with me? <clears throat> we don't know Rosa. We haven't met her, thankfully. Are there any kids in here that need help? If you need help, let me know. Change. How long did she keep you down here? I put a box right there. You can use it to light up the green and the red light for yes and no. You know, I don't think it was very, very nice of her to keep you locked up or stuffed in this little dungeon, this little hole in the wall. 
if that is what happened here. I'm sorry she did that. Can you see us right now? I don't want you to be afraid of me, okay? You can also make these purple lights change color. I'm nice, I'm not gonna hurt anybody. Who are you? My name is Dave. What is your name? Can you tell me? My name's Ryan down here too. I can hear Dave. And I can hear the your questions or your answers. You can use this. I know this looks really, really, really weird to you. But you can use this to say things to me like you have been. Can you come through and tell me what your name is? Please? Can you touch one of these lights to let us know where you are? I'm just down here to make sure that you're okay. And I want to let you know that she can't hurt you anymore. She can't keep you from eating. She can't keep you from sleeping. She can't keep you from bathing. She can't keep you from leaving. You're allowed to leave. You don't have to be stuck in this room anymore, okay? So if you want to leave, you can go through that door right there. But on your way out, I would love it if you could touch that red light that I set up to let me know that you can hear me and that you're leaving. Mm. Epoch said no. You can move around this place now. You can make it your own playground. I'm not going to do anything to hurt you. Neither is my friend Ryan down there. He's just trying to talk to you down there. Red light again. Nobody's holding you here anymore, okay? Is Robert or George here? We were told that she buried Robert in the backyard. What do you mean? That's what we were told. They say Robert passed away of starvation. That she hurt Robert, starved him. Pleasure. Did that say pleasure? Yes. Did Rosa take pleasure from hurting the kids? Did she make one of you children bury Robert? Right here are the chains, where the chains, the last remaining shackle mount, where she would chain the children to the wall. Did she bury any children here in this dungeon, in this little room? Rosa, why did you do those things to these helpless children? Whoa. Something just moved upstairs. Really? I heard a loud thump. Children. Ooh. Ghost tube just said children. Hello? What about children? Did you like hurting children, Rosa? Hello? If that even is your real name, we're not sure. Is 
that what you did, Rosa? Did you change identities and go from city to city hurting children? And just disappear once you got ran out of town? Move to the next city? Coming back down? Listen, you were evil to these children. Horrible. If the stories are true. So why are you afraid to come out and talk to one of us? We're on the children's side, Rosa, not yours. So keep that in mind tonight. Do you just hate children, Rosa? Or, are you, or were you miserable as a person? Ghost Tube's gotten awful quiet. I know, the last thing it said was children. Are you serious? Yeah. Was that when I was upstairs? Right before you walked up there. Oh my god. That's mine. What's yours? I'm sorry. I was just going to put my hand on the wall. I wasn't trying to take any of your toys. But I'm not done talking to you yet, Rosa. Mm. What made you think that you could just do these awful things to these kids? I'm feeling very strange down here. I feel almost like lightheaded. If there's any children down here, we're sorry about what happened to you. We're sorry you had to be here. I mean, just look at this, you guys. Imagine. If the stories are true, imagine being a child. and being locked up Demon. down in here. It's really awful, really sad. And it just makes you wonder what's going through somebody's mind like that to, to not just do that to one child, but an entire building full of children. You know, a whole group of children. Maybe it was a control thing for you, Rosa. Maybe you failed at so many things in life and you were so miserable that you felt the only thing you could do was control and hurt a bunch of children. Was that it? Tradition. Protect. Protect. You didn't protect children. I think Mrs. Hummiston protected the children. Who? What is that? Sounds like the GoPro. What? sure what that was but I think it was the GoPro upstairs I'd find out that our GoPro had somehow overheated and completely shut off what in the world as hard as I tried to get it to start recording again it wouldn't do it the heck I've never seen that before are there any children left down here that need help so I grabbed our old GoPro to set up in its place Okay, so I had to swap out the GoPro because it said it got too hot, so I put our other GoPro here. Now can you try the red one? This red one right here. We're not sure why it overheated, as it is a reasonable temperature inside the Gettysburg Orphanage. 
But for now, the older model will have to take its place here in the dining room. Sean. Is that your name, Sean? Okay, I've never seen that happen before, but that doesn't mean that it's not just a mechanical malfunction. Well, my name is Dave. And my friend Ryan. I'm coming back down, Dave. Is getting ready to come back downstairs. And we just came. The GoPro here. did something I've never seen it do before. What? It said that it got too hot. Oh, really? Yeah, it said it was too hot and it shut down, so I swapped it out for the other one. Oh, wow. Anything strange while I was up there? Um, not really. Okay. Might take the epoch and bring it back towards you. Okay. We'd love to talk to you and... Come closer. I hear you. We're here. What did that second one say? I hear you. Come closer, I hear I you. I meant it. Mm -hmm. I meant it? Come closer, I hear you, I meant it. Mm hmm Come on in, we want to have a talk with you. <sighs> How old are you, can you tell us? Oh, actually the EDI was going crazy for a minute or two. Was it? Yeah. Temperature and air pressure? Oh, oh, wow, it just said no. What was the last thing you asked before? Shopkeeper. Shopkeeper? Are you talking about Tom? Flash no again. Yep, no. You're not talking about Tom. Please go. Are you talking about Chris? What do you mean? I want to talk. What the hell is happening? We're trying to talk to you. Are you learning how to use that now? I need to go. Who is this? What's your name, please? Whew. You okay? I just feel very lightheaded. I felt the same way out there. I literally told the camera that. Really? Out there? I said I feel very off and lightheaded down here. I do. I feel like very spinny. Was it talking? Was Ghost Tube talking that much before I came down here? Uh, no. How old are you? You never told us. Angela. Angela. Angela? It's the second name that's come through. Angela, how old are you? Angela, are you here in this little room with me? You okay? My whole entire bottom half is asleep. <laughs> it gives you a good idea of how it felt to be the children stuck in the pit down here. Yeah. Yeah, I've only been sitting here for like 20 minutes and my legs are dead. I can't imagine having to be trapped or chained up in here or whatever she did to you. Do you want to swap? <laughs> I don't even, I honestly don't think I can stand up. <laughs> I really don't. Let's see how this goes. Dave's going to try and get out of there. Graveyard. 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 Yes, there is a graveyard right behind this building. That's where Amos Humiston is buried. Is this Mrs. Humiston? Ooh. 
pretty sure the epoch just flashed. It did. No. Literally answered no when you asked if it was Mrs. Humiston. Is this Rosa? Keep going. Is this Rosa? Is this Dr. Bourne? You want me to take the epoch? Yes, please. I literally cannot stand it. <laughs> Wow. Whoa. Literally, I switched it. And it started to go off. I don't know if there's any place for me to put this. I'm gonna stand, I'm gonna stand right here. Are you in there? I'm gonna walk down here. Okay. Doctor, are you here? My name's Ryan. Are you here, Dr. Bourne? Dave said that... You said the word children. Look at all these bright lights down here. Where are we? I think if I was a kid, I would want to... We're in the... We're in the Gettysburg Orphanage. Try and pick these lights up, or touch them, or... We're in the Something. Gettysburg Orphanage. And right now we're sitting in the pit, one of the most horrific things that was done to the children down here. Were you here? Or do you remember? The battle? Come on, come on out and talk to me, please. I know you can do it. Is there anything that I can do to help you down here? Is there anything that Dave and I can do to help you if you are upset? I'm right here where Right where Miss Rosa would have shackled you to these walls. Do you know why she did that? I tell you, it's really sad to be in here and just to see all the toys. To think about that there were actually children locked up in here. She probably didn't even let them have toys. No, no, these were left from the uh, investigators that come here as like a, an offering to the children. But it kind of drives the point home. 26. 26. 26 what? Whoa. REM pod. You can touch that again. That's a cool toy, isn't it? See how it did that? It's inside. Ooh. What's inside? That's a... That's a little bit too freaky. If there are... If, if there are children down here and you need help... Trapped. Ooh, trapped? You need to escape. Tell us, we can help you get out of here. You don't have to be trapped in this pit anymore. Stressed. I can imagine. This would be a stressful place to live. 
With the equipment seeming to quiet down and the activity being more prevalent when we're close to each other, we decide it's time to do an Estes Method Spirit Box session here in the pit. Going into headphones and once again we're going to be recording the Spirit Box so you guys can hear the responses as they come through. While I listen to the Spirit Box, we'll also be running Ghost Tube Seer to see if any relevant images are created from the magnetic readings inside this horrific solitary confinement area. All right, so we're going to start doing an Estes session here in the basement. Ryan is going to be actually inside of what they call the pit. We're going to see if we can make communication this way. Okay, and we're going. Okay. All right, children. My friend Ryan. Crazy. My friend Ryan has a radio, and he can hear you talking to him. We would love for you to come out and say hello. <laughs> that was a man's voice. I couldn't make it out. Is that you, doctor? Are you here? Dave. Yes, yeah, I'm Dave. Who is this? Tell me who you are. And then another voice that was too fast after I finished talking, so I didn't make it out. Are you upset that we're down here in this basement? Does that make you mad? I thought... I thought I heard a man say ghost really softly, and then a louder man's voice came through and said, Miss. Are you a ghost? Is that what you're saying? In all. Rosa, are you here? I want you to come through the radio and talk to Ryan. Are you here? Why did you hurt these children? Again? Again? Maybe? They were just little kids and you preyed upon them. Are you evil, Rosa? You're a bad person for what you did. I thought I heard a man say pleasure. That's weird, because that's what came through earlier. That she hurt Robert, starved him. Pleasure. Did that say pleasure? Yes. Did Rosa take pleasure from hurting the kids? That's sick. That is disgusting. You are a, a piece of garbage. Hate her. Hate her. Who do you hate? Are you talking about Rosa? You don't like Rosa? Pain. You're allowed to talk about anything you want. You don't have to be afraid of her anymore, okay? I don't want you to feel scared or afraid or ashamed or anything like that. We're here to help you. Okay? I am here. Oh, and that a child's voice came through. Gonna have to review that one. What's your name? Can you tell us your name, please? How come you don't want to leave that room in there? That pit, that dungeon. How come you don't want to leave in there? Kid? Are you afraid to leave? If you're a child and you're afraid to leave, it's okay. You don't have to be afraid. Please. Please. Sounded like a child. You can leave. Did she do awful things to you? 
What happened to Robert, the little boy Robert? We were told that she buried Robert in the backyard. Is that true? Yes. Was it more than just one child that she buried? Ooh. I thought I just heard a man's voice say Rosa. Wow. Is that you, Doctor? This is the type of confirmation we've been waiting for all night. Sitting here inside the pit where the evil matron Rosa Carmichael used to lock children in solitary confinement, I hear a very clear man's voice say, Rosa. And after reviewing the recorded spirit box audio, I'm more confident than ever in what I heard. Take a listen for yourself and tell us in the comments if you hear it too. Was it more than just one child that she buried? Ooh. I thought I just heard a man's voice say Rosa. Oh, wow. Rosa, are you here? Come through the radio and talk to us, please. Tell us why you did this to these children, please. Did you enjoy hurting them? Thought I heard pain again. Is Mrs. Hummiston still here? A child just screamed play. The seer just came through. Ooh. That looks like little kids. It looks like little kids just came through on the seer. What is that? These are cameras. I know they're weird looking, aren't they? But they won't hurt you, I promise. We haven't done anything yet down here to hurt you, have we? You know you can trust me and Ryan, right? We're not trying to hurt or scare anybody. I know I keep saying that, but... Hi, child's voice again. Hi. Touch that little red light in there where Ryan is in, in that room. If that was you saying hi to me. <laughs> Mommy, I don't feel good in here now. Ryan is not feeling well in there. Are you in there with Ryan? Oh God, something's, are you close to me right now? It's like vibrating, like the wall or the something's vibrating. Nope. Stop. I'm like shaking right now. Mm. Is somebody affecting my friend Ryan? Ryan? Yep, that's Ryan. Are you affecting him? Are you making him feel weird? Oh, I've got to stop. You good? Yeah, I'm like just like shaking. I don't know what it is. Like I just got whew, like, I think what I was actually feeling that was vibrating was the rock underneath of me shaking because my legs are shaking so badly. Oh, really? Yeah. Let me stop here. Was any of that relevant? Somewhat. I will tell you to uh, take a look at the seer images. There was an interesting one that came through. Okay, stopping, images, 
Oh gosh, there's like two little boys. Yeah, two little kids, right? And that is the only thing that came through besides a man and a, a weird looking man with a tie on. Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, that one of the little kids is creepy. It is. Is that Robert and George? Maybe. Whew. I swear I heard the Rosa come through. A man say Rosa. Yeah, that's weird. Oh, I can't believe that. That's kind of crazy. What? The two, the two kids. I know, yeah. Out of all the things that would come through on Seer, mm -hmm. two very clear children, what looks to be male children, boys. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. That was one of the punishments they gave to the girls, though, was wearing the... They oh. said one of the punishments at the orphanage was to make the girls wear boys' clothing. That is true. Um, and then when that that second seer image came through, mm -hmm. I poked my head around the corner to look at it. And as soon as I did that, you went, hi. God, yeah, it was like a very clear child's voice went, hi. So that was kind of creepy. I think it's time to set up. We got about an hour left in our night. Let's set up abandonment so we can leave these cameras alone while the building is completely empty. See what it captures. Let's do it. Whoa, that was good timing. What? The, the IR light on this camera just went out. Yeah, this one died too. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, as I said that, it went boop and <laughs> went dark. So let's get these cameras set up throughout the building and see what happens when we leave for an hour and see what paranormal activity occurs in the Gettysburg Orphanage. Let's do it. When no one's here, if I can get up. Yeah, good luck with that. It's uh, kind of painful. Oh, okay. I'm up. All right, it is time. We are officially getting ready to leave the Gettysburg Orphanage empty. We are. And to see what happens when these cameras set up here, we have four of them set up in this building to see if they pick up anything when no one's here. We have a camera here in the basement pointed back from the area where the children were supposedly, from what we heard, chained to the wall. Yes. And then also you can see back into the hallway that leads to the pit. We have a camera also pointed into the pit with a mail meter, which was going off just a couple of minutes ago. It was, yeah. And then I did turn that battery pack off, so it's, whoa. Mm. Then we have a camera upstairs in the dining room, covering that area with some motion activated stuff as well as a REM pod, and then back in the back room, which would have been the backyard when the orphanage was open. Yes. We have a camera there with the Poltertune PMB, and we also have cat ball and other things in there too that it could that could trigger while we're gone yeah a couple of motion sensors and that kind of fun stuff yeah you ready to head out i'm ready if you're ready i'm ready let's see what happens when the gettysburg orphanage is completely empty no scary, one here scary scary let's go let's go but first <gasps> We're leaving. Not too dramatic. Not too dramatic, just slightly. All right, kids, play with these toys we left for you.
There's no doubt in our minds the Gettysburg Orphanage is haunted by its past. And when looking at its intention from the very beginning, it's hard not to wonder if things could have been different. If Dr. Borns had never hired Rosa Carmichael, and she hadn't unleashed hell upon the poor children, would this have been a happy place? There's no doubt the ghosts of tragedy haunt this building, and everyone who lived through its horror. And it seems, even the man responsible couldn't shake the memories and guilt of what happened here. Because, in the last year of his life, he wrote this poem. The light above, the powers of darkness come, environing thou has ever shown. Hope and perception in halting gloom, despair's chill terror in my soul I own, and hope abandoned, I am now alone. Dr. Borns, 1888. On the next episode of Paranormal Quest. Jenny didn't live here, however, she will indeed die here. We are back for night two, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. The Jenny Wade House. Ooh, yeah. All of the walls will be riddled with bullets. God, as soon as I walked in here, my head, like, wow. I believe that truth is far stranger than fiction. Ooh, something just felt like it pulled on the back of my jacket. Is this your house? Whoa. Tripwire. I swear to God that just said my daughter. We believe that your spirit is still here. Whoa. Wait, that was a REM pod going off. All right, well, note to self, you got to have that light switch on to get, uh that outlet to work, so that motion sensor was MIA, but you live and you learn, am I right, Dave? Oh, you're more than right, boss. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know you were holding the camera. That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> that was so weird, I don't know why I found that so weird. Anyway. No, you, you, you are right. Um, you live and you learn. Sometimes you make mistakes, and sometimes you win a lottery, and tonight, we made the mistake. I'm ready for that second one, though. Are you? Second what? The second option. Oh, yes. Winning the lottery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. But I will say, I had a lot of fun investigating the orphanage at Gettysburg here. This building is filled with history, yeah. both good and horrible. And I feel like there is a lot of energy trapped inside these walls, especially down in that pit in the dungeon. We had so many experiences that we really couldn't explain or attribute to anything natural. Um, with the Estes, with some of the equipment going off, and with that really bizarre picture coming through Seer. Yes. There was a lot to talk about down there. So, And the history of this place being a Civil War hospital, a field hospital, the history of this place being the basically the headquarters for the Union Army during the battle. A lot of, lot of action, a lot of emotion, a lot of tragedy, a lot of sadness, and a lot of happiness, I'm sure, in this building. Yeah, absolutely. So if you guys are ever in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and you want to come on a cool investigation or come on a cool ghost tour, come and check out the orphanage oh, yeah. here at Gettysburg. This place is really cool. And if you come in to Gettysburg, definitely check out everything that Ghostly Images of Gettysburg has to offer. That's right, Ghostly Images of Gettysburg right there on the back of his hoodie. We appreciate them for inviting us to come out and investigate here, but our trip to Gettysburg is not done. Not, a, not even by a long shot. Next week, next episode, you are gonna see us investigating Probably the most haunted house here in the city of Gettysburg and probably one of the most haunted houses in America, if not the world. And that is the Jenny Wade House. Oh yeah. So stay tuned, come back next week for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button. Yeah. And hit that subscribe button. Absolutely. And if you watched all the way to the end, make sure you comment. Gettysburg's got your ghosts. Gettysburg has got your ghosts. Let's go. Bye. Bye.